Hello, welcome, my name is San. This is a reading today for Capricorn. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Capricorn, I'm doing your reading today with um, two new decks. I've got the new Colette Baron Reed, Dreamweavers Oracle, and this gorgeous Orion's Animal Tarot, um, which are really interesting when they're combined together. So, I'm doing your reading with both of these decks blended together. So you're going to see a mix of both in your spread today. So you've got, if the dogs come circling around, fascinating. Okay, so dogs to me, I mean, obviously they're companions, right? They're support, they're support characters. If the dogs come circling around, I also see them as um, like protector energies, even almost like guardian angels, actually. Yeah, we'll call it that. Support support angels or support characters. Because it's kind of like, energetically, I kind of see that everybody has like dogs at their sides, which I feel like maybe are angels, right? So, okay. And then could it be a dragonfly? Okay, so this card is fascinating because it talks about kind of like a group goal or a group project, a collective project. Which, and when I say collective, it, it seems really broad, but it could just be talking about, basically, maybe it's emphasizing the fact that um, it's not just yours, obviously, a goal. It's a goal or a project that you are marching towards, and the ones that are beginning to circle around you, interesting, because there is this, this kind of circling in this card here, the ones that are beginning to circle around you or show up in your life more regularly may be a part of that goal in your future that is actually more of a collective goal than you may realize, which is really fascinating because you're starting with the nine of pentacles. So perhaps it hasn't even occurred to you yet that, the, that what it is that you're working towards or moving towards, which maybe you haven't even discovered yet, right? It's kind of like farther out than, than perhaps you've you've um, seen. So maybe you're not aware of that dragonfly project yet or that dragonfly goal. But the things that are part of that are starting to show up in your life right now. You're starting with the nine of pentacles telling me that you're still in a very kind of singular or independent focus, but you might actually be moving towards something that is other than that, right? Because you've got characters beginning to show up in your life or maybe characters that have been there for some time but they're stepping forward in a more prominent way now right like they're stepping to the foreground they're beginning to circle in a sense if the dogs come circling around it's interesting that it looks like it's like in your sleep right with those sleeping sheep there and it's it looks like dream time in a sense maybe you're dreaming of somebody maybe that's what we're talking about here somebody's showing up in your dreams that could make sense actually Okay, overall energy from the Lifruma Healing Oracle for Capricorn. No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. God or mouth. Okay, that's a big energy. Okay, so this is interesting. It's actually almost kind of, it's talking about things beginning to rise to the top. What does it say there? To rise up, to give song to ancestral codes. Okay, so it's like something is rising up in your awareness or in the experiences around you. Maybe just because of, because of the timing of it it's like you're getting closer to this dragonfly you're getting closer to this dragonfly you might not yet have really look at the color how the colors blend together that's what's rising up is the dragonfly collective project or collective goal there's some sort of a collective future that is beginning to show itself to you and because it's be just beginning to it's just beginning to rise to the top i want to say and because of that 
the others that are going to be involved in that future with you are beginning to circle around or arrive in your life. Does that make sense? So, but you're still here in this nine of pentacles, right? Kind of doing your own thing, really independent. Put it together with this card here, time to feed the hungry heart. That's fascinating because this could be what's, this could be in a sense what's rising up in you is the time to feed the hungry heart. There's a layering in this card that I find really fascinating. You see this face kind of inside the mouth of this creature here. It's almost as if there's something buried deep within you that you haven't yet witnessed or, you know, pulled to the surface. But I feel like you're actually actively um, kind of doing that now with the nine of pentacles combined with that card. It was looking to me like you're working to bring something forward. I mean, you're actually coming through as you're in a great place and you're wanting to almost kind of strengthen or activate your heart in some way, if that makes sense. It's like you're seeking something to feed the hungry heart or to activate your heart. And you have reached this place where you've got... Um, in a sense, kind of the base is covered and you have maybe more time or leisure or just kind of a, um, a space in your life or in your beingness that is allowing you to kind of seek. You're in a seeking phase. You have time to, to search out something intriguing for you. You're looking for something to feed you. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like you've, you've got a lot. You've accomplished a lot. And now you're looking for something else, something new, something to really kind of activate your heart space. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like you're resting in that energy. It almost looks to me like meditation actually which is really interesting that this card is coming up is kind of in perhaps a dreamscape energy or you're beginning to see these characters in your dreams maybe they haven't quite manifested yet perhaps or they could very much be in your actual physical reality especially with this knight of swords coming in next it could be or it could be where that begins to happen right where it begins to spill from your dream space or your meditation uh room from your meditation room into your actual um more 3d reality with this knight of swords showing up right it almost looks like an interruption it's like you're in this space here with the nine of pentacles and the hungry heart like um oh it's almost like you're you're kind of energetically scanning looking for something that is like really resonant with you so that's what i'm saying it feels to me like you're you're by yourself you're independent and you're kind of opening yourself up for a profound experience. So it feels to me like it could be kind of a meditative state, right? Or it could be even like a prayer state, something like that. Saying I'm ready, I'm ready for some sort of an activation or I'm ready for something to really touch me deeply, something like that, right? And it's like you're, it's, your energy feels great, grounded, peaceful, and ready, willing for something ready and willing for something new and interesting and opening. It's almost like you're just saying to the universe, bring me the next thing, something like that, right? But then the Knight of Swords comes in and this is this kind of uh, disruptor energy. It's like somebody coming in with a really, uh, I don't want to say it's combative, but it feels like compared to your energy, there's a, it's a jarring experience for you, right? Because it puts you in this five of wands. It could just be that somebody's kind of barged into your meditation space and it's just disrupting you because it puts you in this five of wands, which feels like, well, it feels kind of like a trap in a sense, but it's just like, um, it creates a, um, a situation that you find hard to extricate yourself from. Maybe they're just somebody who likes to talk. Somebody who likes to talk and once they begin talking, it's difficult to separate yourself from them. There's definitely a desire on your part to put distance between you and them. And it could just be just because they're disrupting what it is that you're focused on and you're absolutely not seeing them as part of that, right? But it is interesting how you may be asking and opening and being willing for something and then this is what appears immediately upon that request, right? If that resonates with you. It's like you're just settling in. You're just settling in to have some sort of profound uh, spiritual session, for example. And then this one kind of 
that, you know, rings your bell, something like that. And it's like, and then for a while you're stuck with them. You're stuck dealing with them. And really you just want to be over here. If the cat curls around the moon, it's interesting though, because you've got two cats, right? One from each deck talking about independence or a desire for independence. But the fascinating thing is, okay, this cat on the moon, what does it say? If a cat curls around the moon, it actually, I think in the book, it kind of talks about almost um, being too kind of reclusive perhaps, or being too um, distant from others, which is fascinating. But this is actually a really desired state on your part, right? Like it's like you want to be, you want to be off on your own, exploring this kind of like really intuitive, dreamy space. But when you do that, it's like when you put yourself in that space, then the dogs begin circling around, right? Because you got the death card next, right? There's that circling around energy. It's kind of like you're, it's almost looking like this meditative ritual, right? Which it could be anything for you. It could be, um, you know, you're going out for a walk in the woods or you're settling in for a, a, a kind of, a spa day where you're just gonna treat yourself, you know, self-care type of an energy. And it's like every time you do that, especially because there seems to be some sort of an asking or an opening, it's like you're creating an opening, you're inviting something, but what you're getting isn't what, what you're desiring, right? Because it's like you settle into this energy here and it's like once you do that, it's like it's right there, it's immediate that this one comes around. So it looks to me like you kind of, every time, I mean, maybe it's only happened a couple of times, but it feels to me like maybe it's been a series of every time I set about to do this thing in independence, in an independent state, it looks like it kind of exploring psychic realm stuff or energy or intuition, right? Um, every time you do that, it's like they're right there they're right there. You may have heard me mention this about my own stuff once, at least once I've mentioned it in a reading that I have that I do have somebody like that where every time I open up or like I actually have a lot of kind of walls in my energy <laughs> to keep things at a distance. And every time I kind of start lowering one of those barriers, there's a particular consciousness that shows it's almost like they're always there and so if I start lowering that wall it's like I see them they're there and so I always keep that blinder up because because I don't want to see them and I don't I want to do other things and I don't want them involved but every time I kind of lower my guard there they are and it kind of feels like that for you and it's like you want to change that or it's talking about that you're looking for this incredibly with the death card too, the transformation it's like you're wanting big transformation or like you're ready for some big transformative experience and every time you kind of put yourself out there for that to the universe it brings this energy around or it is recently anyway right and then you can't get away from it. It's challenging to get away from. And then it also seems like it makes you really protective with the four of pentacles. It makes you want to kind of close in on yourself and feel really protective about this thing that you're doing. You see how the energy kind of flips on itself, right? It's like here it feels like it's very open and relaxed and receptive. And here it kind of closes in and becomes really protective, right? And guarded. So that's the effect that they're having on you. Because if you if you don't protect yourself, then you get tangled up. And so you're really not wanting this to happen. So it's like you've learned that any kind of uh, any kind of hint that they may be circling around causes you to shut down, right? But what's interesting is that there's this other thing going on too. When the ones you need fly close, right? So this is interesting because because there's this thing going on here with the axolotls, that every time you get into this particular state or you do this particular thing, like I said, maybe you go, you go to a certain place or you go for a walk in the woods, something like that, and then it's like, then you bump into them. And if it's not bumping into them specifically, it's almost like you start getting all of this information related to them, or it's like they come back up, something like that, right? But then with this B energy here, I mean, it looks, 
it looks and feels very different. It kind of feels like a best friend, somebody that you're really excited to see. When they come around, when that one comes around, so does a lot of other stuff, right? It's like things open up for you. So you see how the one has a, has an experience, uh, has a an effect on you where it closes everything up. Well, there's this other one that opens everything, right? Like this flower. But if you could see in this flower here, really kind of subtly, there's all these kind of little beings that are moving towards the bees at the center. So it's looking to me like there's a relationship in your life that whenever you're with that one and maybe you seek them out on the tail end of having an experience with this one, right? It's like this one pops up, you get all frustrated and it's difficult to detangle from it. You get, um, it's kind of like whatever it is that you're working on goes exactly in the opposite direction. And so you seek out this one perhaps because they help you um, kind of expand beyond it or let it go or let it loose. But there's something really profound happening when you're with this one where it brings, it attracts all of these energies to you, which is really fascinating because I almost wonder whether it's, it's pulling this one in as well. Okay, so with the Four of Wands coming next, it's like whoever this B relationship is for you, whoever this relationship is for you, that feels like, well, you're part of the same, you're part of the same pack, you're part of the same family, or you have this, you have the same goals, which is really interesting, right? Because we're talking about a collective goal here. I feel like this is further out. It's not, it's almost like you haven't quite discovered yet that this is something that you may be working towards or moving towards in your future. It's a little bit farther out. I feel like this one is involved, this B partnership here. So this could be a best friend. It could be your partner. It could be it's just somebody that you go to anytime something really aggravates you, right? And you get really frustrated, you may go to them and talk to them about it because it puts you back in this four of wands energy, right? Which is just happiness. It's your happy place, right? Everything kind of feels harmonious again, but at the same time, it draws all of this. It's this magnetic, it create it creates a mag a magnetism within you that actually draws a lot of things to you. So I guess it's kind of like a good um, manifestational, you know, you've got somebody that when you're, whenever you're with them, the energy just, just uh, uh, kind of levels up and levels up and levels up. And, and it's, it's only goodness for both of you. You go away feeling so much better and uplifted and a lot is kind of happening in the background energetically because of that connection. Actually, interestingly, even the, so even wisdom needs to rest. This is a really fascinating card to me, right? It's just like these whales sleeping or floating or... So how I was seeing this card actually, in the book, I think it describes it as, uh, you know, everybody needs a break kind of thing, right? Even the wise ones, even the counselors, even the teachers, they all need a break as well. But I'm actually seeing this as, it's almost like a lulling it's like these creatures are being lulled into a peacefulness. And I feel like it comes out of this energy here. It actually feels like the buzzing from these bees is lulling the, is, is a very lulling energy. Why is that significant here? It's interesting though. Look at this. It's somehow connected to this. You put these two cards together here. Look at that. That's fascinating. So, okay. Maybe just recently, whenever you get together with this one, it puts you, it, the buzz of it, the feel goodness of it kind of lulls your spirit and allows more of this future to get closer or to become, become within your view. So it's like you may find yourself talking about it. When the two of you get together, you may realize that you're starting to talk about something related to this future, a shared future, or you're both getting really excited about your future in some regard. And that comes up whenever you're together. It's like, it's almost like you go to them perhaps in order to kind of help get over or release this um, tension that's created within you because of this Knight of Swords. But while you're together, it quickly turns to this conversation, right? Because it, br it brings you back to your happy place kind of thing, which is really fascinating. So it's helping to pull that in, 
but at the same time, it's helping you prepare for the next arrival of the Knight of Swords because I feel like they're not going away. You're going to have to continue to deal with them. And there's something about this relationship that kind of helps set the tone or puts you in a good energetic place so that, so that this happens. So there's this Seven of Swords here that is looking to me like the five of swords, right? Like there's the, it's this one kind of sneaking up on you. This is really fascinating. It's almost like this knight of swords has been very blatant and obvious. It's like they keep coming around. I feel like they keep coming around. I'm just feeling into that. Do they keep coming around or is this a new experience, a new kind of irritant in your life? It feels like it's kind of cyclical, right? It keeps coming around. Maybe that's part of, maybe you're, you're adding that to what it is that you're desiring for the future is kind of bringing a big transformation or big change to that dynamic, right? So you're adding that into the mix too. Whatever it is that you're trying to pull in to kind of satisfy your own spirit, now you're kind of adding this in, right? But there's something here about maybe what's coming next actually is that this Knight of Swords isn't going to be so blatant and upfront. They're going to be more kind of um, covert in their... It's almost like, okay, it's something like they used to kind of come in and speak directly to you. They had a message maybe that they were trying to communicate to you or something they wanted agreement with and it just it doesn't work out. It's like your energies just don't go together, right? So, but this time, it's like this time that they've, that this next time that they come around, they're not actually going to make it known. It's almost as if they're kind of in the background attempting to do some sort of energetic effect on you. It's like they're trying to connect with you telepathically, right? With this spider here in the seven of swords, you see the spider there? That's what's giving me this idea of them being more subtle. It's still a sword's energy, but I feel like they're not communicating with words. It's like they're communicating telepathically or energetically. It's not necessarily that they're trying to be sneaky. It's that they are not getting any results this way. So they're doing it more energetically. They're trying to be more creative about it or come at it in a different way. It's like they're, they're thinking a lot about it, right? And it's like when they think about you, it impacts your energy. It's like you can feel them, especially when you are being really receptive, especially when you're being really receptive and open. So it's almost as if you're moving into a phase where it's, you don't have, you don't, they don't have to show up in the space that you're in to cause this friction for you. It's like you get into this resonance, this co-resonance, maybe with this B friend here that puts you in this like ex exceptionally at ease. And you can start to feel the presence of this one still impacting you much more subtly. Well, maybe because of that, this Nine of Wands is coming up next. It's talking about that because of that, there's kind of an understanding coming in or a shift in the energy about to play out where you're taking a stand, right, with this horse that is changing the way that energy impacts you or how you experience it, right? Right? because you are standing up to it somehow. And it could be that it's all this energetic kind of one step removed thing. Because I feel like if they're standing in front of you and you're having a conversation, it just gets really tangled up. It, tang it entangles you, it kind, of, it kind of traps you. Did I say that this was a trap? It kind of feels like a trap to you. Or like I said, they start talking and you just can't get away from them. But this is a more subtle, energetic thing. And I feel like something is getting resolved in that realm because they're not standing in front of you. There's something beneficial to that. And it's beneficial to them being, to this being just an energetic kind of telepathic exchange. Or it's like you're doing it all energetically without having to see them in person. Do you see what I'm saying? It has something to do with you taking a stand, a stand, 
energetically. And when you do that, and I feel like it's coming like out of this relationship, there's something really beneficial coming to you from like a best friend. You're coming to some sort of an understanding or some sort of an energetic place that also at the same time seems to be pulling in this future, if that makes any sense, that the next time this one, their energy is even suggested to be in the room with you, you're going to have a different experience of it. I hope that makes sense. So basically you've got some sort of an antagonist energy or some sort of a challenging relationship in your life that is feeling really disruptive to something that you're working on that's going to be next level for you, right? Because it's like you've achieved a lot and you're looking for something next level, right? Something that's really going to feed your hungry heart. So there, it's almost like you need to resolve that situation in order to really get there. So there, maybe that's the reason why they're coming around is because that's the thing that you need to really clear out in order to get to that next level thing which seems to be this, this is the next level thing, the dragonfly thing, whatever that is for you. It's some sort of a collective goal, right? So this one is helping you get there. It's like your best friend that's helping you kind of work through this challenging relationship and realizing maybe that you have more impact energetically and from a distance than you ever could by standing in a room with them, if that makes sense. And then when the storm spirits play is ending the reading here, so this is a fascinating card because I think in the book it talks about kind of um, surrendering to chaos. You know, when there's a storm, when there's something kind of bigger than you going on to just uh, just kind of surrender to it and allow it to pass through kind of a thing. But actually today, this one is coming through as almost like what this relationship is harnessing because it feels to me like you and that kind of best friend, interesting with the dogs, are those dogs? the foreground there, all this dog energy, you and your best friend are having this, it's almost like you're creating the storm by your co-resonance. There's something about your energy together that is making a difference energetically. And they're putting you in this place where you're able to stand up to this once and for all energetically and shift the dynamics in a really big way. You see how it's all jumbled here and chaotic? Well, here it's like, it's all lined up. There's a lot more um, kind of, how do I wanna say it? It's like, it allows for things to move in ways that were, it, like nearly impossible or just not happening before things can move differently after this moment right and it's like you guys are the ones who created it maybe by just getting together and and actually interestingly talking about well maybe beginning to talk about them because it's like you kind of show up there like calling your best friend saying you won't believe what knight of swords did now or whatever it might start out that way, but it quickly turns into this kind of rising up of this dragonfly future. You see what I'm saying? So, and as you step more cl like closer to that dragonfly future, it's giving you this, this kind of clarity to make this shift in this relationship because the two of you are creating this storm energy, which I want to say that maybe they're even going to experience as as chaos. It's like they're the ones maybe you have to surrender to the chaos of the storm that you are creating with this B partner, your your best friend or whoever they are. Okay, so I'm going to continue to, to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time, Capricorn. Thanks. Bye.